This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Good morning, everyone. Shalom Aleichem, Ruchem Abba'am. On this fine Sunday morning, the 40th day of the Omer, Tav Shed Pein Today we're going to prepare for the Yom Tov of Shavuos, for the Regal. We're going to speak about a mitzvah that very little is known about. And we'll, we will discuss whether this mitzvah is, still applies and what the parameters are. The Gemara says in Rosh Hashanah, Dav Tezayin Amar Beis, Amar Rabbi Yitzchak, Chayiv Adam Lahakpil Pnei Rabbi Beregal. One is obligated to receive, to countenance, to behold the face of the Rabbi on Yom Tif. This is not a suggestion. This is not a, an idea. It's an obligation. It's a chiyav. Shenemar. It's a pasuk in the Nevi'im. Madua ad hoylechas elav hayoyim. The husband of the Isha Shunamis says, Why are you going to the Navi today? Loi choydesh, it's not like it's Rosh choydesh. Veloi shabos, it's not like it's shabos. Meklal de bechoydesh, ve shabos iboy leilamezal. From here we see that on Rosh choydesh and shabos, you must visit your Rebbe. So the obvious question on this Gemara is, why would Rabbi Yitzchak begin with the statement you're obligated to visit your Rebbe on Yom Tif, and prove it from the fact that the husband says, why are you visiting your Rebbe? It's not Rosh Chodesh, it's not Shabbos. Doesn't that imply you're Mechuyev on Rosh Chodesh and on Shabbos? And are you in fact Mechuyev on Rosh Chodesh and Shabbos? In other words, is another reason why we have Shiurim on Shabbos, it's not just because you have to learn, it's because there's a din, you have to be Mechavel Pnei Rabbi the Shabbos. And if that's the case, why didn't Rabbi Yitzchak say that? Why did he only say Beregel? And what's the reason for this mitzvah? That's the first Gemara in Rosh Hashanah Tezayin Marbez. Another thing we could discuss is, is this din in of Masech Rosh Hashanah brought in Shulchan Aruch? Anybody know? Anybody remember? Does it say anywhere in Shulchan Aruch? You have to visit your Rebbe on Yom Tif? Doesn't say it anywhere. Is it brought in the tour? No. How about the Rambam? Yes. So, is it a machlekes that the Rambam does hold of it? If the Rambam held of it, you would expect it to be in Shulchan Aruch. Rabbi, it doesn't, doesn't give any further guideline. So m- many people get out of this, they don't have any Rebbe. So this way they don't have to fulfill this mitzvah. That's one mahalach. Question is, um, you know, if a person has to greet the Rebbe, is that mechai of a person to have a Rebbe? Because if you're obligated to greet your Rebbe, so the part and, uh, part and parcel of that is you have to have one. There's another Gemara in Sukkah on Chavzayin Amad Beis. Look in the Gemara. Tan Rabbanan. Masa Rabbi Loi, Shahalach Lahakto Pnei Rabbi Lezer, Rabbi Belud Beregel. There's a story about Rabbi Loi who went to visit the face. We have to see what's this emphasis on the face of Rabbi Lezer, his Rabbi in Lud on the Yom Tif. So it means he traveled there. Amar Loi. So Rabbi Lezer said to Rabbi Loi, Eloi, Eincha Mi Shoivse HaRegel? You're not from those who rest on the Regel? Why are you traveling to visit me? You're not from those who rest on the regel. Shahaya Rabbi Lazar Oimer. Rabbi Lazar would say, Mishabeach ani es ha'atzlonin. I praise the lazy people. She'ein yoitzin mi batehen beregel. That they don't leave their houses on Yom Tif. Rabbi Lazar says, I praise the atzlonim. They don't leave their houses on the regel. Dechsev v'samachta ata you should rejoice, you and your household. So it's a stira. The Gemara asks, why did Rabbi Eloi visit his Rebbe? But Rabbi Lezer, the Rebbe, praised lazy people on Yom Tif because you need to be home and make your family rejoice. To which, by the way, okay, to which the Gemara says back, Aini, but it's not true. Isn't there a mitzvah to visit your Rebbe? Didn't Rabbi Yitzchak and Masech the Rosh Hashanah say, Chayiv Adam lahakvel pnei Rabbi Beregel v'amar Rabbi Yitzchak minayin shechayiv Adam lahakvel pnei Rabbi Beregel shenemar madua ad hoylechas elav hayam Why are you going to him to he- today? Loi choydesh v'loi Shabbos meklal de bechoydesh v'shabbos mechayiv inish lak v'loi ape Rabbi Loi kasha it depends. If you could go and come back the same day, you're mechoyev. 
if you're going to have to go, let's say, to somewhere in the Ukraine to visit the Rebbe, then you're not allowed to. Because you have to be home. Okay, these are the two Gemaras. By the way, in terms of being lazy on Yom Tif, I once personally asked Harav Avigdor Miller, Zechazak Levracha, do you have to do exercise every day? He said yes. I asked him, when he was in Slabatka, did the Bachar, do, I asked him, do the Yeshiva Bachar have to do exercise every day? Yes. I said, in Slabatka, did they exercise every single day? He said, yes. I said, how? They walked to a faraway dining room. I said, what about Shabbos? He said, yes. What? I said, what should you do? He said, walk fast. So even though you're supposed to be lazy on Yom Tif, that means you, you stay in the, in the vicinity. But of, but of course... That's if you're doing it out of anxiety, Rav Miller explained. If you're doing it because you're, like, you're anxious, but if you're doing it just to preserve health, you can walk brisk. Or whatever yeshiva you're affiliated with. No, you should, he, he said you should walk briskly. I'm just telling you, I personally asked him this question. I have it written down in my notebook. Anyway, and I try to do that. On a walk on Shabbos, Kedchazer, B'chal um, three and a half blot. 45 minute walk. It's good, you can say good say there. Anyway, the, now, so now let's discuss the, uh, this halacha. Is it halacha lemaisa to visit your Rebbe on Yom Tif? Why is it not brought in the Shulchan Aruch? And further, why would Rabbi Yitzchak say you have to visit your Rebbe on Yom Tif? And the proof is, why are you going today? It's not Shabbos. It's not Rosh Chodesh. Does that mean you're obligated to visit your Rebbe on Shabbos and Rosh Chodesh? Okay, this, this is a famous tshuva, Noida Behuda. Okay, Yehuda? Noida Behuda. Okay, so the Noida Behuda is found in Tinyana Arachayim Semen Sadi Dalad. The Noida Behuda is writing to Rabbi Shaya Pick of Berlin, who pointed out that the tour and the Shulchan Aruch omit the din of Rabbi Yitzchak, and the Rambam includes it. So, the Noid Huda begins the tshuva by asking, why would Rabbi Yitzchak say you're chayiv to visit Rabbi on the regal and conclude it's not Shabbos and Yom Tif? Well, then we should prove you have to go to your Rabbi on Shabbos and Yom Tif. You know who asked that question? The Ritva. The Rif brings it in the Ein Yaakov. Um, but the Noid Huda says their approach is doichek. Therefore, the Noid Huda advances the following great chidosh. And he starts by saying, what's the reason to visit your Rebbe on Yom Tif? What's the reason? Like, we know there's a mitzvah of simcha on Yom Tif. Is visiting your Rebbe bringing yourself simcha? What's the reason to visit your Rebbe on Yom Tif? So Nadi Bihuda says that on Yom Tif, There's extra Kedusha. How do we know there's extra Kedusha? Because you bring a carbon Musaf. And if there's extra Kedusha, then it's Chal on the Rav, a Shefa of Kedusha to be Mashpia on the Talmidim. In other words, whatever the Rav could give over, whatever your Rebbe could give over, it's enhanced on Yom Tif. The Kaya Hashpa is advanced. There's a Shefa of Kedusha given over to the Mashbia on Yom Tif, to Mashbia more Torah. And therefore it is your obligation to benefit from it. That comes not only on Yom Tif, it comes on Shabbos, and it comes on Rosh Chodesh. But we will not obligate you to visit your Rebbe on Shabbos and Rosh Chodesh, and we'll explain why. Now, How many times a day are you allowed to stand up for your Rebbe? <coughs> so the Gemara Kedushin says in the Gimel, Amar of Iboy, Amar of Yanai, you cannot stand up for your Rebbe only morning and evening. Otherwise, your, the honor of your Rebbe is going to be more than honor of Shamayim. 
says Rashi, you're only Mekabel Pnei Yoitzroi Shachris Va'arvis with Kriya Shema. So you, therefore you can only stand up for your Rebbe once in the morning, once in the night. But if you're going to stand up every single time, you're making the honor of the Rebbe greater the honor of Shamayim. That's why many people are makbed, not to give any covet whatsoever. This way, the honor of Hashem will always be greater. That's also, that's, uh, you have to get my humor. Don't worry. You know, I'm very dry humor. You know, dry humor is like, you don't even know if I'm joking, I'm not joking. No, but, but I'm, it's tongue in cheek, because I'm not totally joking. I'm actually really not really joking at all. But, um, but halachically, you can only stand up for the Rebbe in the morning and in the evening. Why? Because you can't make the honor of the Rebbe greater than the honor of Shamayim. Therefore, now there are two deois in Shulchan Aruch. One day is, come on, it's not, that's not a problem. You could, you could get up more than twice a day. There are two opinions brought in the Shulchan Aruch, in Yaradeya, Simon Reish Membeis. Whether you're allowed to stand up more than twice a day. There are two opinions brought in the Shulchan Aruch. Therefore, says the Naidi Behuda, from here we learn you can't honor the, Rab- the Rebbe more than you honor Shamayim. Ah, oh. That's why we can obligate you to visit your Rebbe on Shabbos and Rosh Chodesh. You know why? Do you have to be Oile Regal on Shabbos? No. Do you have to be Oile Regal on Rosh Chodesh? No. So we can't obligate you to go visit, to go out of your way and knock on your Rebbe's door and say, Shalom Aleichem, Agun, Agun Shabbos. You're not obligated to do that because you don't have to go up to Shalayim on Shabbos. And you don't have to knock on the Rebbe's door and say, Agun Chodesh. Because you don't have to go up to Yushalayim on Rosh Chodesh. It's definitely a mitzvah too. It's definitely a beautiful thing to do. You will get Shefa of Kedusha if you do that. But we can't obligate you because we can't obligate you to do more to the Rebbe than you do to Shamayim. But is it a mitzvah to visit your Rebbe on Rosh Chodesh? Yes. Is it a mitzvah to visit your Rebbe on Shabbos? Yes. Is it an obligation? We can't obligate you. And what about the opinions that hold that standing up for your Rebbe multiple times a day is not a violation of uh, giving more honor to the Rebbe than Shamayim, they would agree that that's by standing up, because that's not such a big kavod. But by being Mekabel Pnei Rabbi, that's definitely a very strong message of kavod. And therefore, we can only obligate you three... You know when we can obligate you? Three times a year... On Shabbos and Yom Tif, where you're not obligated to go up to Sholayim and visit Hashem, you don't have to out, you're not obligated to visit your Rebbe. But on Yom Tif, that you're obligated to go up to Yushalayim and visit HaKadosh Baruch Hu, then you're in fact obligated to visit your Rebbe. Because the only reason you're not obligated on Shabbos and Yom Tif is why? Because there's a Ptor. What's the Ptor? The Ptor is, you can't have the honor of your Rebbe greater than the honor of Shamayim, And you're not obligated to visit Shamayim on Shabbos and Yom Tif. But Yehuda, on Yom Tif, where you're obligated to visit Hashem, so then three times a year, you would have to visit your Rebbe. It's still like waiting at Shem and, uh, In other words, it should be less. In other words, you should do it less than three. You should do it less than the amount that you're doing at Shem. There's no din that you can't equate. The din is it can't be more. In fact, in this week's parsha, at the end of the parsha, it says, "V'chol masar bakar v'tzayin, kol asher yavar tachas hashavet, ha'asiri yia kodesh l'Hashem." Says Rav Shamshin Meyashtepal. What's this pasuk talking about? It's talking about the Asar Harugim Malchus. It's saying, "V'chol masar bakar v'tzayin." You know the ten guys who are shepherds. You know why the uh, the Shvatim? Do you know why the Asara Harugi Malchus were killed? Koil Asher Yavar Tachas Hashavet. They took the place of the Shvatim. And Ha'asiri, the tenth one of the Asara Harugi Malchus, who's the tenth one? Rabbi Akiva. Yeah, Koidash Hashem. He took the place of Hashem. Asked of Shamshan, how could Rabbi Akiva take the place of Hashem? Because since he darshaned, as Hashem Lekechatira, the Rabbis Tamich Hachamim, and he equated them. So in his world, they're equal. He could be in lieu of HaKadosh Baruch In any event, so I wanted to say that, comes out, the bookends of Sefer Vayikra are Rabbi Akiva. It ends talking about the death of Rabbi Akiva. 
And the Megal Mukai says, regards from the Megal Mukai, I visited him on Matzah Shabbos. Megal Mukai says, Vayikra has an Aleph Zeira, the Gematria of Aleph Zeira is Rabbi Akiva, 399. So it comes out, the two bookends of Vayikra are Rabbi Akiva. In any event, it comes out, there's a, so in other words, the obligation to visit the Rebbe is to gain the Shefa of Kedusha that is Nitoisiv to the Rebbe on Yom Tif. Why would Rabbi Yitzchak start by saying you're obligated to do it on Yom Tif and, and bring a halacha that seems to indicate you're obligated on Shabbos and Rosh Chodesh? The answer is really fundamentally you are obligated on Shabbos and Rosh Chodesh. It's just we can't obligate you because then it would come out that the honor of the Rebbe would be more than the honor of Shemayim. But by Aliyah Laregel, where Taka you are mechiv to Aliyah Laregel, then Taka you are mechiv to visit the Rebbe three times a year. So when the Beis Hamikdash stood... Says the Noy Behuda, there would be a chiyuv to visit your Rebbe on Yom Tif. Would you be obligated on Shabbos and Rosh Chodesh? You wouldn't be obligated, but it would be a big mitzvah. But Bizman Hazar, when unfortunately, like we read in this week's parsha, Vashi Moisi Es Mekdeshechem. And even when the Beis Mekdash is destroyed, the Kedusha is there. Why? Because you only have a chiyuv if you could bring a carbon chagiga and oilas So therefore you're exempt from being oile regel. We can no longer put an obligation on you to go visit the Rebbe. I, the Gemara and Sukkah that we quoted, that Rabbi Elazar said about to Rabbi Eloi, that why aren't you resting? And the, Gemara, and the Gemara says, well, what do you mean why aren't you resting? You have a chi of l'hakvo p'nei rabbi b'regel. That's because that story took place. B'zman she'ein b'sam ikdash kayim. B'zman she'ein b'sam ikdash kayim. There is no chi of. Now you ready for the whopper of the night of Yehuda? The Rambam brings the halacha. You have to visit your Rebbe because the Rambam talks about all halacha. Even what's not Noigea Bizman Hazah. The Rambam has a whole chilek of Avoida, a whole chilek of Kedushas Hamikdash. The Rambam is not only restricted to Halacha Lamaisa Bizman Hazah, the Rambam covers the entire gamut of Halacha. Therefore, the Rambam codifies the Halacha, Chayiv Adam Lahakmo Pnei Rabbi Beregel. And where does the Rambam bring it, by the way? The Rambam brings it in Hilchis Talmud Torah. Ah, it's not Noigea, so what if it's not Noigea? But the Shulchan Arach, by the way, the Noigea no, says the Rif and the Rush also quote it, because the Rif and the Rush are matik all halacha, even Bizman Shein Abis Megdash Kayim. Even halachas that are Noigea Bizman Shebe Samigdash Kayim. But the Tur and the Shulchan Arach, who are telling you only what's Noigea Bizman Enu, so they omit the halacha because there's no chiyav. It sounds like it's almost a problem because if you don't have a base on Mikdash, then to go see your Rebbe, that's more. Again, it's the way the Nehru Yehuda learns. So you say, is it usher to visit the Rebbe? Right. He even said on Shabbos and Rosh Chodesh, it's a mitzvah too. So in other words, it's only considered a violation because the truth is in Shulchan Arach, if you could bring me a Reish Membez, a Shulchan Arach, Reish Membez, Yordea, the... The, uh, there is an opinion you're allowed to stand up as many times a day and that's not a violation. So in the world of Neid Behuda, it's only a violation if we obligate you to. But if it's not an obligation and you choose to do it on your own, that's not a violation. That's why in Shabbos and Rosh it's taka mitzvah. So according to Neid Behuda, it would taka be a mitzvah, maybe on the bottom shelf. It would taka be a mitzvah um, to visit your Rebbe, although we can't make it an obligation. Now I want to just speak out something because he sort of takes it as a Dabra Pashat. There's no longer a mitzvah of Ali Al-Rega was manazah. It's not so Pashat. The Chsam Soifer in, uh, in Parshas Emar spoke about the earthquakes in Tzfas. Anybody know what year did, was Tzfas ravaged by earthquake? 1837. Tzfas was ravaged by... Is it a green set? Green right? Bottom right? Oh, it's Yushami, thanks. Okay. No, thank you. 1837. Tzfas was ravaged by earthquakes. Chsam Soifer says, you know why? Kinas Yerushalayim asasazais. Yerushalayim is like your wife. 
she's a jealous wife. Imagine if, I mean, just imagine if you came home one day with, uh, you know, another one. What, what would the dynamic be? It's, it's not going Sura Salaza. Says, um, says Uchsam Sarf, Yushalayim is like your wife, but she's a jealous wife. And everyone was running to Tzfas, to the Ari, to the Rajvi. Yushalayim said, no, 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 you know, back here. Let's go. Come on, back, back where you belong. And Yushalayim destroyed Tzfas. That's what Uchsam Sarf writes. Kinas Yushalayim also says, Kisham Shar Hashemayim, gateway to heaven is in Yushalayim. Ir Shechurba Layachtav, the Beis Hamikdash Shomala is attached to it. Sham Har Hamaria, Akedas Yitzchak Sham. Sham Shachav Yaakov, V'cholam Loi Sulam, Sham Har Beis Hashem, V'tel Shekol Piyos Ola Poinim. It's the mountain that all mouths turn to. V'loi Zaza Shechidim Mikos Maravi. And he says it's already a hundred years. Everyone's paying attention to Tzfas, because the Rashbi is in Meiron, and the reason Tzfas, V'chol Ha'olam L'Eretz Yisrael, Loi Samu Pneim, El El Tzfas, Tveria, V'yushalayim Nishkechol Agamri, but V'hu Ir Sham Hashem Shama, Shegam Bizman Hazeh Mitzvah Lalois L'Regel Yerushalayim. There's a Mitzvah of Aliyah L'Regel Bizman Hazeh. Now, it doesn't mean there's a Chiyav, but it's a Mitzvah. So, you, see, you know, sometimes people, oh, he goes to three times a year. Very chashev. There's a Mitzvah of Aliyah L'Regel, it's on Hazeh. Who says this? The Chassam Seifer quotes the Yaivetz. Chassam Seifer went there three times a year. No, he never went. He was never in Eretz Yisrael. There's no way to get there. It's not Shaya. He, there's a Mitzvah, but it's a bigger Mitzvah. Chassam Seifer didn't go, but he encouraged his Talmidim to go. In fact, in the Chuvas, let's see if I have it here. Yes, in uh, in Yardea, Simon Reish Lamed Gimel, the Chassam Soifer had a, a Talmud, Rav Amram. And uh, by the way, I want to bring out a very important thing from here, a very important lesson. Chassam Soifer had a, a Talmud, Rav Amram. And Rav Amram, among his Talmidim, went up to Eretz Yisrael, went up to Shalayim, and went up to Eretz Yisrael. Chassam Soifer says, I'm matmiya on G'dayla Yisrael that when they went to Eretz Yisrael, they didn't go to Yishalayim. He says, I, throughout history, many Jews did not. That's because when the Sanhedrin was in Yavna, so they had to go to the Chachamim. And in the time of the Beis Yosef and Arizal, Um, he says like this, in the times of the Gemara, there were all kinds of persecutions in Yerushalayim, and the Sanhedrin went into Galos, and once other places were situated, and the Chachamim were in a different place, there's no longer a mitzvah to go dafka to Yerushalayim. Because even Ezra, Ezra did not go up to build the base of Mikdash so long as his Rebbe was alive. Because Talmud Torah is greater than Yeshiva Eretz Yisrael. So in times of the Yisrael Sanari, the kibbutz of the Chachamim was in Tzfas, so they had to go there. However, you should know that when my Talmud, listen carefully, Rav Amram went up to Eretz Yisrael, I warned him twice and three times, you're going, you better only live in Yushalayim where the Kedushas Beis HaMikdash is, like the Ramban did. I either Kvarim, nah, you can't live somewhere. You're allowed to live where they're living sages, not where they're dead sages. So Chassam Sofer warned his Talmud three times, you better go to Shalayim. He says, I, Afagav de Bitzvas, Ninsu Kivrei Anshe Elohim, Mi Yomor Zebek Dushas Yushalayim. Listen to what his Talmud did. Venasa Hanala Das Lelach Biam Derach Yafo Lishalayim. So my student went, he was going to arrive at the port of Jaffa and go to Jerusalem. And God, the Baal Hasibais, Stopped him off from Akko to Tzvas. And then once my Talmud got to Tzvas, he wrote to me, he asked, should I move to Yushalayim? So at that point in time, the Chassam Sofer says, if, the, if Hashkach already guided him, I told him at first, you should only go to Yushalayim. But when he landed in the port, somehow he ended up in Tzvas, and he asked me if I should uproot, says Chassam Sofer, Amarti, Sha'ani Migni Mimekam Kimachigar Basham Kavdi Rasa, he already has a house there. 
And it seems, it seems to me, says Chassam, so from his letter, Shekasha Yeshiva Sashil Shayma Love, that would be very difficult for him. And, listen carefully, the Chazisi Ladate Shaloi Ratsa Ela Lefaiseni Al Sha'avra Al Dati, I could tell by his letter, he wasn't really asking me. He was just sort of asking for permission. He wasn't asking me, Rebbe, what do you think I should do? He was basically like, Rebbe, I know I didn't listen to you. Don't be upset at me. Therefore, I just let him do what he wanted. Because he, if he would have asked me what I should do, then I would tell him he should go to Yishayim. But he really wasn't asking. He was... From here, I learned a very important principle. If somebody asks you a Shaila, you have to be able to read. Do they really want to know what to do? Or they are just looking for an endorsement to do what they want? And if they're really asking what to do, they'll get one answer. If they're just looking to politely say, I want to do this, okay? So then, you know, like, what do you want from me? So, okay, you know? But you see from the Chassam Soifer, that when you're asked a question, you have to be oimed. Is it a, a real question? Is it a genuine question? Or is it just a, a matter of courtesy? Okay, I find that very interesting. Bottom line is, according to the Rabbi Yaakov Emden, that there's a mitzvah of Aliyah, Bizman Hazeh, would there then revert to be a mitzvah to visit your Rebbe, Bizman Hazeh? And I would say as follows. Even according to Naid Behuda, there's a mitzvah to visit your Rebbe. It's just we can't say there's a chiyav, because there's no chiyav to be oile regal. But in fact, there is a mitzvah to be oile regal. Here, here's the question though. According to Naid Behuda, there's no chiyav to be oile regal. So there's no chiyav to visit your Rebbe. But why wouldn't it be brought in Shulchan Arach, not as an obligation, but as a noble thing to do? But the Shulchan Arach doesn't bring things that are not obligations? Okay, this is the, the sheet of Naid Behuda on Ali al Regal. According to the Naid Behuda, there's no obligation. It would be a very uh, noble thing to do. Even Rosh Chodesh and Shabbos, Al Pi Musr, it has meaning even Bismanazah. Karabai say, have a wonderful day. Thanks for joining. Brachavat Sacha. Kaltam. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.